Okay, so today I am going to try and fix my butane soldering iron. It's a Weller P2K Portisol, and it's awesome, uh, except it's busted, and I'm pretty sure it has a clogged jet. And so I called the guy at the shop, and he's like, oh yeah, no problem, just buy another one for $90. And I was like, hmm can I just buy a new jet? And he's like, no, buy a new one for $90. And I was like, hmm, 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 okay, no. <laughs> anyway, so here's the teardown. Um, you just unscrew the tip here, which you'd be familiar with um, for changing out the, uh, the soldering points. And then you can unscrew, you need a small, very small Phillips screwdriver. And you unscrew four small screws that are yay big. And they are in here, so you can see those four holes. And so this thing comes out, and you'll notice it has this little tube thinger sticking out here and that tube thinger goes on to this little coil probably can't see it on this video but there is a little coil which is this thing here and that's part of the uh, sparking system and this is the this is the button or the lever for the spark. It has this little piece of metal on it also that has to be in a certain position to work properly. Mine seems to be kind of bent, so I'm not sure what to tell you about that. <laughs> it was also a little bit loose. So anyway, that that's a thing. <laughs> um, there's also the uh, gas lever. And the inside of this thing is kind of interesting. It has uh, this diagonal slot, diagonal slot in it, and that. Um, so what we're talking about this diagonal slot here. So it comes out straight down and then moves over to the right um, when you're looking at it this way. But actually, in terms of the soldering iron, it's this way. So the slot moves to the left from the bottom right to the top left and that slot interfaces with this thinger so this thinger has a little pin a little conical pin sticking out and there's also a spring and so the spring whoop, the spring fits on here onto this valve this is a it's actually not a valve it's a jet and jet housing and it has a valve on the bottom and when I say valve it's actually just like a, a little rubber teeny tiny little rubber uh, stopper that goes inside here which is too dark to see <laughs> and there's an o-ring and there's also this little hole this little hole right here and anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> this spring pushes this thing down, and the gas lever pushes on this lip, pushes this upward, and pushes against the spring. Um, now, in its passive state, this spring pushes the valve down, and that pushes this rubber end cap down into the uh, gas release stuff that you can't see down there. Um, and so this rubber stopper presses in and stops gas from coming out. And so that's the, that's the off mode. And when you flick this thing up, it, 
it uh, turns this thing and also moves it upward, doesn't it? No, yes, no, maybe. I think actually, it's hard to tell, but I think this shelf here, little shelf, pushes on the lip of this jet housing and moves this whole mechanism upward. Anyway, so there's that. And blah, blah, blah. So when you're putting this thing back together, the order of operations is this thing. This collar with the point on it goes um, on the non piezoelectric sparky side. This is the piezoelectric sparker. And so this point points um, onto there's the sparker, and this point, the point on this collar goes on this side, and it has to be in a certain position, or else this thing will get jammed. So it usually has to be about about here in order for this point to this point here. This point to interface with that slot. Anyway, you'll figure that out. And now let's get to the point. <laughs> Six minutes in, we'll get to the point. In here, we have this mechanism, and gas comes um, comes where through a itty bitty little hole, itty bitty little hole here, right? Uh, it can't get around this O-ring, so it goes up through here, and goes through a jet, and probably mixes with some air, and then out through this tube here. Now this is actually made of three pieces of metal, and they're pressure fitted together. And I've been trying to clean out this jet, because I assume that's what the problem is, and so I've tried compressed air. I've tried uh, vinegar. <laughs> I've not tried CLR and cooking, cooking the jet. Um, so yeah, I've tried blasting compressed air down here and in here. It kind of worked for a little bit and then it locked up again. So here is what I do. So here is what I do to remove the jet from its housing. Is I squeeze on here. I don't want to damage this area here because that is um, that fits into a plastic tube and I don't want to rough up that because it will start eating away at the plastic tube later. And then I take a coat hanger, coat hanger, and I put it through one of these holes. And then just work that back and forth a little bit. Uh -huh. Right? And then this part comes off, and inside there is a little filter, which you can't see, but it's made of uh, probably brass spheres that have been mushed together into a filter. And when I put this thing in here with the gas on, I guess the gas is on all the time when the, the thing's disassembled, anyway, I can light that and fire comes out. So that's, that tells me that this thing is not locked. And the problem lies elsewhere. Next, I grab onto this little sleeve here, like this, and again, whoop, 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 whoop. Here we go. Here. Okay. So that is um, the rest of the housing there. And this thing contains the jet. So this is like an air mixing chamber. And the jet squirts a jet of butane into here. And then out, out this hole and into the rest of the, uh, the soldering and torch mechanism. So there's that.
And here should be where our where our troubles lie. So in here we have an itty bitty teeny weeny little hole, which is probably blocked. Now, um, I don't know where to get a jet like this, like a replacement. It seems to be kind of specialized. Maybe they're in a torch. I don't know. Anyway, I think that thing's plugged and it's pissing me off. <laughs> um, there's probably a way of sticking in a teeny tiny little bit of wire, but all the things I've tried, like a single strand of copper wire, this is way too big to fit through through the hole in here, which is probably like a, I don't know, a thousandth of an inch or something crazy. So what I'm going to do is um, drill it out. <laughs> it'll stop being a jet and it'll just be a hole. Um, but it's not working now and uh, I'm just going to do it. Um, now my rationale for just going ahead and doing it is that when I have fire coming out of here and I've adjusted this thing to a few different settings, it puts out a reasonable amount of flame just in its raw state. By reasonable I mean it's not like it's just like just like a lighter. You know, it's less than that much fire. So mm, I'm gonna hope that when I bore out the hole it'll still mix okay here and uh, and that the rest of the mixing mechanism where if I put it this thing here that thing will accept the incoming um, mix of butane and air and uh, shoot it out here and I'm gonna hope that it's gonna be okay <laughs> So I'm going to take a needle, a needle, and I'm going to stick it in a drill, and I'm going to drill through here, or something. We'll see how that goes. So here I've done it. Um, let's see if I can make this visible. Okay, so we can just see the point of the needle coming out of the uh, end of the jet here. So what I did was I took a uh, needle wrapped it in electrical tape and then um, ran it along the edge of a ground piece of glass a little bit. Just the ground edge of a piece of glass on each side here and here. Just a little bit to um, to make the needle into uh, from a conical shape into more of a, um, I, don't know, I guess a, a flat blade kind of shape like that. So microscopically drill its way through there. Um, also it's made of much harder metal than brass. Anyway, so I grabbed this in a pair of pliers and drilled through and it worked and so now I have a hole blasted through this thing and we'll see how see what happens next. Okay, so I've got it mostly back together again and haha awesome. That. Change the flame level. Press the adjuster. Turns off. Okay, let's put it back together and see what I've done. I have broken it. It doesn't work right. <laughs> it does this. That's that's not what you want. <laughs> but I don't know. It was a good try. Whatever. <laughs>